Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, where it's time to read your professional watercolour artist Peter Woolley as he puts the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. Thanks Matthew, and uh, welcome back. Well, earlier in the programme you saw me uh, start this tonal study, and this is the point at which I uh, stopped, I've established the main elements within the composition, and now I'm going to uh, hopefully finish it off for you. Uh, it's still a one-pot painting. I still only have um, Payne's Grey here. I've spilled out into different pots here, but it is basically a one-pot painting. Um, and it's all about tone, as I was explaining earlier, and I will mention it again because this is the whole point of the exercise. A painting will, uh, will be successful or otherwise dependent upon whether you get your tonal contrasts correctly positioned. What am I talking about here? I am talking about contrast. If you take a photograph, for instance, and you turn it into a black and white image, and you've got two tones of similar value or the same that are right next to each other, it can actually weaken the whole composition, the whole painting falls apart, or just basically doesn't work. And what we have to do is engineer it. So we have to, we, sometimes we have to tweak it and, and make those things happen. So if you, if, you, if you need to make something uh, really stand out, then, um, then you, you have to engineer it as such. I'll show you what I mean. I've got my, uh, uh, my Payne's Grey still here in the pot. I'm going to add a little bit more paint to it. So I'm darkening it slightly. Don't go too dark too early. I think that's the, the best piece of advice I can offer at, at this point. Um, what I'm going to do with this, and I've switched to a slightly smaller brush as well, so I'm, as well as working light to dark, which is what we do in watercolour, I'm also working from a big brush down to uh, smaller brushes. And I saved the smallest brushes for the tiniest details right at the very end. OK, let's see, uh, let's see where we're going with this. First off, uh, this building here at the moment is just one tone, but watch what happens if I now block this area in here. Uh, how far along do I need to come? To about there. Now suddenly, it goes from being a flat image, hopefully to a, a, to a three-dimensional looking image. Now we can see, uh, you know, we can see the corner of the building and that's the, that is the object of the exercise. So just extend this. I keep dunking my uh, brush in the water, by the way, just to keep it at a, at a reasonably even mix. As I say, if, if you leave it in the pot, uh, eventually it'll, uh, it'll start drying out and it'll evaporating and, and actually the mix changes while it sits in the pot. So I'm just, I, I just want to keep it nice and even there by keeping adding water. All right, uh, so we have the corner of the building comes down to about there. Um, and also, we have another shadow coming in. Slightly bigger brush, I think. There we go. OK, I'm going to graduate that. Just create this edge. There is a little bit of a shadow just on the side of the building there. It doesn't matter too much about the odd little back runs that I've got because uh, it all adds texture to the scene. All right, let's flatten that off as well a little bit. Okay, so where else do I need to build this up? Okay, well, I, I think down here, we will start with this building here. If I go over that, makes it a little bit darker. Like so, I think there's a couple of uh, windows on there as well. That helps. That all helps. We've got uh, there's a window on the side of the the building here. So I'm going to paint the window in the window pane, and now I'm actually going to paint around the window frame. Uh, it's a little bit rough, but that's okay. All right, what I'm going to do here is 
just soften that off, blend it in slightly. So hopefully you can see what I did there. I, I sort of created a window out of thin air. This is like conjuring. It's like a magic trick. Uh, you know, you apply tones and create things just out of mid-air. Mid I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to take uh, some of the dark tone and just work over this again. I, I want this, this corner to be a little bit darker, but I'm now going to just graduate that. I'll bring that down there. Right, so I'm also, as well as, as, well as creating contrasts, uh, in certain areas, I'm also trying to build up a, a little bit of variation, a little bit of graduation is something else that we should be looking for in our paintings. We should um, have, uh, gra you know, graduate things, not all flat colours throughout. All right, take a little bit more of the Payne's Grey. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in the foreground here in the, in the, in the photograph, by, by the way, which it's my intention to completely ignore. Um, there are some, there's some windows here, which I'm going to just establish, just with single, I think, single brush strokes for now. Keep it simple. There we go. Okay. Um, as I say, there's, there's a whole sort of bunch of stuff here. I think what I'm going to do here is maybe just suggest uh, a, bit of a bit of a wall, a bit of a low wall, maybe even start putting in a few of these stone details. There we go. Keep it, keep it simple. And just soften that off, blend it in. And that's something I do a lot of, just to, uh, uh, if in doubt, blend it in. And what I'm doing there, by the way, is I'm using a damp brush. These are all the Silver Range brushes that I'm using. Excellent brushes, by the way. Um, and I prefer them. Personally, I always prefer these to, such as a pure sable, because I find that they've got more spring in the, in the hairs. And that's, how, that's just what, it's what I look for in a brush. Everybody's different. Um, so, just working back here, I, I want to talk about um, how tone is relative. This uh, corner of the, the little building there is, is showing up, but if I darken the trees behind it, it shows up even more. It's, it's, it's relative, you see? Tone is relative. Anthony's mother. Tone is relative, right? Remember, Anthony's mother, okay? The lighter or brighter you want something to appear, the darker the neighbouring tone needs to be. And this is, uh, this is the way we work in watercolour. We work light to dark. So it is constantly... I'm going to go over that as well. I'm actually going to blend that into there. Uh, build that tree up a little bit. In fact, what's happened there is, is I've ended up with, with, a, with sort of two tones. And it looks like uh, some trees um, in front of the lighter trees behind it. So we use tone to create depth within a painting. All right, I don't want this area to get too fiddly, uh, but I want to just take that down to there. And I, again, I want this just to peter out a little bit because I've got the dark edge of the right-hand building and I want to maintain that contrast. Lovely. At this point, I'm just going to put in the, uh, uh, the big tree. Um, this needs to be quite dark. Uh, it comes up from behind the right-hand building. There we go. I don't, want to, I don't want to get too fussy with it. I mean, I'll, I'll just sort of uh, put a few branches in there. There we go. And this is a slightly smaller brush. This is a size 8, I think. Put a few of those branches in there. So with trees, we have to be very careful, um, try to avoid um, straight lines and 90 degree angles if you can. Try to avoid too much repetition. Now look what's happening here. I, I've actually, I've still got some uh, uh, elements 
to uh, uh, the needs sort of adding to the side of this building. So I, again, uh, working with the single colour, working from the one pot, I'm going to darken that off and just really accentuate the corner or the edge of the roof there. And soften that off. Suggest a few, uh, oh, suggest a few stone details here. I'm keeping it simple. Stones, blend them in. Do the same down here. Just a few little details on the side of the wall, I think. Just block in the, the windows there and just darken that off as well. I mean, getting to the point on the painting where I'm constantly looking for areas that need uh, that need tweaking. I keep coming back to that word there, but it is a constant tweaking exercise. Down the edge of the the pavement here, I think I oh, just darken that off. That kind of explains the corner of the road, and I think just also just to. Uh, We'll finish it off nicely, just to emphasise the, um, the the perspective within the scene. We'll be just put a few little tracks coming around the corner, tractor tracks. Like so, I'm just blending them in, keeping it loose. Uh, I mean, when to stop is always a huge question and I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna stop in a moment before I start overworking this uh, it's an easy trap to fall into one that I see students um, falling into all the time which is um, just overworking it just going that little bit too far and let's be honest the dividing line between something being just right and being overworked painfully thin. How many times have you done a painting? You've gone that little bit further and, and you've got, oh no, I wish I hadn't done that. It looked better before. All right, so I'm going to leave this in, its, in, in a sort of underworked state because I think it's sort of illustrated what I, what I wanted to uh, illustrate. There's always room for going in there and adding extra little bits and darkening bits a little bit more. That window there, maybe just go over the the window pane just to emphasize that maybe just to keep going over the edge of the roof there just to again just to emphasize it but I think that is probably uh, in there one more one more time with that track just to emphasize it a little bit more I think I'm going to stop at that point that's a tonal exercise that's a tonal study painting a picture in one color is a good exercise just to uh, to learn and understand the importance of tone uh, it's also an exercise if you've been painting for many years something I encourage uh, everybody to have a go at every now and then just just Take out the Payne's Grey or the Burn Sumber. Do yourself a tonal study. If you're doing, uh, if you've got a particularly important project, uh, as well as a preliminary sketch in pencil, doing yourself a tonal study is a great way of identifying where the tones are going to go before doing your, uh, producing your, your main painting. Now, it's not a masterpiece, but hopefully you can see from that how with very simple uh, brush strokes, with just, just thinking in terms of tone, you can explain a scene. And that's a tonal study. Have a go at it yourself. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, Peter. Really simple one pot painting exercise using one colour to get all the basic tonal contrast right and create stunning scenes. Have a go and see how you get on. And remember, if you want to share your results or interact with thousands of other people who share your passion for painting, log on to saa.co.uk and look for the community tab. 
Right, we've just got time to join our resident bookworm, Henry Malt, as he goes wild in the SAA reference library to recommend another inspirational read. Today's book is Drawing and Painting Wild Animals by Vic Bearcroft. What's your thoughts on this? The thing that struck me most about it, actually, was the way that he varies the style of the painting okay. to suit the character of the animal. Right. Um, we've... If we can find it, yeah. we've got a tiger, I bet we can't now, uh, coming out of a spattered background where all of the... Here we are. The emphasis is all on the animal. Just yeah. that, that abstract background, it's not about where the animal's coming from, yeah. it's where it's going to. Okay. And if a tiger's walking towards you, that is all it's about. <laughs> yeah. So does that show that well? Is that yes, it's... That it's not just, I mean, sometimes the backgrounds are really quite spare. Yeah. And if we then have a look at the wolf, for instance. That's quite a detailed landscape background. Yeah. It is, but it's also very bleak. Yeah. So I don't find that a lovable painting. Yeah. But it's absolutely about the wolf. So this book is basically giving you the, in massive detail, I mean, for this particular picture, there's, Crikey, four or five pages worth of step-by-steps? You've got, oh, it's very much a how-to. Yeah, and it takes it, you through to the end, yeah. I think it's in that one that there have been various animal books, but I think that's the one where he does have advice on working in zoos. Uh, we yeah. We to check that. Yeah, because, more than likely, yeah. Um, the simple fact of the matter is that, you know, you're not going to encounter that sort of animal in the wild absolutely. for the most part. absolutely. So it's, um, what's your sort of, is the book put together well? It is. It I mean, it's, well? it's very much instructional. Yeah. It's based around demonstrations. He's very good on details of things like eyes and yeah. noses. And it's got the nice little tips. And the nice little like. tips that pull out, yes. Yeah, we like those, don't we? And this is quite nice because it shows you the basic shape following into the, the nose and the same for the eye as well, which is what people want because... My experience of animal painting is that once you've done one eye, it's pretty much the same for every animal in a way. So it's you can almost do it like this. You can almost have a single script which you can just tweak and suit. It's about discovering that the things that you think are complicated yeah. actually can be made quite simple. I mean, from basic just, shapes. From basic yeah. shapes. And is this I did just want to check. And it is, in fact, in the introduction... And he is talking about working with wildlife sanctuaries and zoos, which is the obvious place to see this kind of thing. He is very good on the style of animals, and they are reasonably sensibly grouped so that you can find the sort of things you and want. It, You're not doing is, a zebra one minute and a tiger the next. And it, yeah, and it is obviously mixed media as well, this one. It goes through acrylic, watercolour, pencil, all the way through. I think that's about when you, what we were saying at the beginning about yeah. suiting the style to the subject. Yeah. yeah, he's suiting the medium yeah. to the subject as well. And yeah. there are some things that have a lot of detail yeah. and some that have a lot less detail yeah. because that's not what the actual composition's about. Right, OK. So what's your summary of this one? Very solid on what it sets out to do. Nice one. Thank you for that. Thanks for that, Henry. Vic's book is certainly packed full of practical instructions, top tips and techniques to help you capture the true individual characters of animals. A great addition to your art library. OK, folks, time for our final break. But join us in part four when leading SAA artist Jeremy Ford spreads his secret ingredient for making your stained palettes look brand new. And we go down to the farm with Marilyn Alice to capture colourful roosters. We'll see you very soon. <laughs>